The meeting's live, Miss Mealy. Thank you, Chris. Okay, I'd like to call to order um, the Finance Committee meeting of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. It is 1.04 p.m. and we are live on a digital platform. Um, I hope that, uh, hope that everyone's doing well this afternoon. Uh, present here from the city, we have a, a slightly smaller crowd than usual. We have Adam Yoder, Bonnie Katz, and myself, Liz Mealy from uh, the Finance Committee as well as a couple other members of uh, city, or excuse me, one of the members of city council, uh, President Randy Allison is, is here with us today as well. Uh, from the administration, we have Peg Woodring, Adam Winder, Joe Pavlock, uh, Chris Cooley, of course, uh, hosting us here, John Sander, um, and Derek Slaughter. Um, and I think that's it for the folks that we're expecting today, unless, um, Adam, John, do you have anybody coming on as a as a guest to help explain anything on, on today's agenda at all? I do not. I do not. No. OK, great. Um, then we have no reason to change around the order of the agenda today. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and get started with item number one, um, which is a resolution awarding construction services for the for City Hall and the ramp project to Land Serve Incorporated. Mr. Sander, take it away. You've really yes. been working your butt off on this. No problem, Liz. Yes. Yeah, so for the ADA ramp project at City Hall, we are required to build an ADA ramp on the north face of City Hall. So with that project, let's back up two years. Uh, this project was designed by Gannett Fleming and, and didn't get built at that time. So I took it and I was able to separate that project out, Gannett's project, into two projects thus far, the ramp itself and the elevator overhaul. So we're talking about awarding the ramp now. So the ramp project had five bidders and I have to read them out loud. <clears throat> Landserve had a bid, a base bid amount of $164,516. GM Acrossin had a, a base bid amount of $192,575. Lundy Construction had a base bid amount of $235,000. Turnkey Construction had a base bid of $249,318. And Greenland Construction had a base bid of $586,000. So those are the five bidders. Uh, I re I'm recommending the low bidder uh, for the project. Um, with this project, uh, where the ramp interfaces with City Hall is directly over top of our domestic water line. So due to that, the water line comes into the City Hall, it will need to get split. As it is now, it currently comes in the building and gets split inside for domestic water and also for fire. Uh, it's ideally should be come off of the main street and have two separate lines, one for the domestic uh, water and one for the fire. Um, so that will work will be done first. And then additionally, with that water line replacement, the contract, the general contractor will know exactly where those water lines are for the placement of the, of the pile foundations for the ramp. Um, with the ramp project, it did put out, as Liz uh, recommended, optional items on the project. And they were cast iron railing and a stone veneer facade. Some of the uh, contractors put bids in, some didn't. I, did, I, I didn't make it required because I didn't want to exclude a good contractor from bidding on the project. So in this case, the low bidder, LandServe, did not provide a cost for the stone veneer. However, they did provide a cost for the railing. I would recommend the railing that comes with the structure, uh, which is the uh, steel powder coated railing with the interior handrail, which is the current specifications for ADA, for handicap, or excuse me, for ADA compliance. Um, again, this project, you know, all, the, all this information that you have in front of you was reviewed by Austin White ahead of time. Um, the project itself will sit in the exact same footprint as the project was designed for two years ago. In addition, the ramp will have a maximum 12 to 1 slope, and uh, the minimum clearance uh, is only four foot, but it's going to be five foot wide from, of clearance on the ramp itself. The maximum cross slope will be 2% for ADA guidelines. That's on the ramp itself at its interface with City Hall and at the landing at, at the sidewalk level. Uh, like I said, this was designed by a professional architect. Uh, I'm not gonna name him, but by Gannett Fleming. And the plans require 
that the project be built to the 2015 International Building Code, which does have full ADA compliance. In addition to that, I am requiring after the project is built, uh, signed and sealed as built drawings from a licensed professional architect or engineer in the state of PA be provided to us to cover us. Um, let me see here. So with, with the whole, let me see here. I'm just read through a couple of things on my, put my glasses on. Sorry, I'm getting old. <laughs> Uh, so in the packet on the 17 page PDF there, I gave you the everything essentially, the advertisement for bids uh, that was on pen bid. I utilized pen bid again. All the questions that were asked during advertisement answered by myself. Uh, acknowledgements uh, that are required by the bidders and then all the, the base bid amounts and then all the actual um, pay item descriptions and specifications. And then also the, contra the contractual paperwork from the, the low bidding contract. Uh, give me one moment, is anything other, anything else important? I also included a photo of, so that I worked uh, with a precast ramp manufacturer uh, within the state of PA. The, the low bidder also found that exact same one. So I sent, they sent me photos of what some of their finished projects look like, and you have that in front of you as well. Um, I guess that's all I have at the moment. If there's any questions, by all means, ask away. You're muted. Yep. I know. Bonnie, Adam, anything you'd like to ask? Yes. Um, John, when I talked to you yesterday about this, um, clarify the railing for me, okay? The cost for the railing. That is not incorporating to the, uh, that's going to be an add-on, right? No, it, no, it's not. So uh, there was some suggestions to put a decorative, more decorative cast iron railing on, which, uh, which also I also included as one of the attachments. I would recommend against that because kind of, it's kind of an old school on your grandma's porch type railing. I don't think you really want that. What you want is the current standard uh, circular powder coated railing, which is with that photo too on the attachments has. That's the one we want with the interior handrail. Um, yeah, I think that's likely wise, John, but I think what Bonnie's asking is that railing is included in the bid. That, routing, that railing is, is included in the bid, yes. Okay. So yeah, Bonnie, the, the additional cost for cast iron hand railing is exclusively for cast iron. The, yes, the regular the, powder coated railing is included in the bid. And in the event that we... I, I would recommend against against that that uh, cast iron, but in the event we wanted to choose it, it's sixteen thousand one hundred dollars. No, I don't think we need that, and we I do like what the picture looks like, and it does require uh, all of this is ADA compliant, even up to the door, right? Correct. Okay, and um, I'm glad you clarified what the the eight thousand dollars was for the plumbing, and also for the pavement, uh, five thousand dollars for the pavement. Uh, the only thing, and this is what you and I discussed yesterday, what's yeah. not in this bid is is the doors. Sure. The doors are going to be very essential to go along with this ramp. As of now, I don't have the doors in this project. Currently in two weeks, I have the other project, the, the elevator portion with, with the doors on that contract. Um, that's how I have it right now. I, uh, I guess I could look at possibly doing a, a change order after the after the contract is awarded to put the doors in this contract that's possible it's very possible but i these are going to be kind of going con concurrently so essentially once we get this project awarded to contractor a contractor b will be starting to work doing their work i'm going to require right up front that those doors those doors not only those doors those automatic doors with the ada push button on a bollard Gets installed as you see on the as you've seen on the plans if you if you had a chance to take a look at them. Uh, what I'm asking is because this bid is going out first um, when the ramp is done because what you said is this going to take three weeks in in their in their place in their factory to put this together and then it's going to when they bring it to city hall it's going to take about a week to put together in front of yep. city hall right right correct so essentially okay. yep yep yep. Yes. And what I'm asking is the doors will not be ready for something like that because we haven't even bid that out yet. That is correct. 
That is correct. We that is correct. How um, I have it on the second. I, right now, I have it on the second contract. We can possibly look at doing a change order uh, during construction if needed, uh, an official uh, change order if needed. I don't know what the rest of the committee feels, but I, to me, uh, the ramp is useless until we have the door, the doors. And uh, to me, I, you know, I don't know what the rest feel, but I, I think we should go for the doors also. It should be almost simultaneous when you do this, because from what you're saying, this project is not going to take that long to get the ramp completed. Uh, but it might take a little bit longer if we're waiting for the bids to come in for the doors. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, what, what's our timeline here, period, on all these improvements? We, we're looking to have them finished November before. November 10th. Right. Um, I, so I, I think we will, clearly, we will clearly beat that deadline, Bonnie, think, even, if, even if we wait on the, even if the doors don't occur as part of this package. Um, and I would say that I'm guessing John, I, I mean, it sounds to me like most of the work involved with the ramp is, is relatively straightforward sort of masonry slash um, sort of infrastructure work, whereas we've got electronics involved with both the doors and the elevator, correct? Correct, that's kind of why I lumped them together. But uh, right. I mean, in the, in the event we could, we could possibly look at a change order during construction, we can look at that if, if, if we see fit, I guess. I mean, I think, I think Bonnie, the, the, the John's probably right that the cheapest way to bid it out is going to be to package the elevator and the doors together because just, it's, it's much the same quality. It's much the same work. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, but I think, you know, when we've gone through this before, we know how much longer it's going to take for the elevator to be, um, come to fruition. And I just well, don't want to hold, you know, it's, you know, when we looked at what Gannett Fleming did, you know, with, with the proposals two years ago, how much longer the uh, elevator was going to take all the way around. I just don't want to see because of the way the bidding is being combined. And I understand exactly what you're saying, John as, and, yeah. and Liz, as far as the cost factor, as far as the bids go. Um, I just don't want to see the doors being held up because of the, the longevity of how it's going to be for the elevator. Well, so John, you said you were ready to bid the elevator in two weeks, right? Well, it's, it's advertised right now. I have a meeting on site next week. Okay. Meeting on site next week, followed by and the bids getting coming to me the, the following week. The following week? So realistically, we have them under contract. One of the first things we can we can require is the door, the new doors. All, all so we're four looking doors. At a month all from four. now, we will potentially have this item on the agenda for a bid. Or for, for acceptance, correct? Correct. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, I think the amount of work required with the water line, in addition to the, the, this whole project, it's going to take a look. Let's not, let's try to be realistic. There's construction. There's going to be delays. There's the water line work. There's also a sewer line that's nine foot below the existing ground out there. We're putting an existing, we're putting a vertical clean out. That way for maintenance in the future, we can clean out our sewer lateral at city hall. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of time there. There's going to be a little bit of time with the demo of the all the mulch area, the all the sidewalk area, and also the installation of, uh, depending on uh, was it 26 or so uh, concrete piles that are 16 inch diameter by a little over five foot deep with, that are that are reinforced. I'm requiring them to be reinforced. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of time there, and all during that time is probably is when the ramp will be constructed in the shop, and then right. Right. So. So yeah. we vote on this on Thursday and we approve it. Um, the, the ramp is likely to be finished, what, six weeks? Standing? Uh, usable. Yeah, that's feasible, yeah. As long I mean, as everything goes smoothly. As long as everything six, goes smoothly. Eight, six to eight weeks, say. Yeah, two months, let's say two months. Okay, um, and then, so if in a month we accept a contract for the elevator work and the doors. Yes. Um, with the requirement being that the doors are the first work completed and then the elevator comes second. You know what I mean? That, that, uh -huh. that, it, I mean, they can run it concurrently. They can do it however, but we want the doors out of the gate first. Right. Uh -huh. Um, right. we're saying that might take two months for us to get the door work done or what do you think? I don't, I'm not a door specialist, but I don't think it'll take that long to get the doors installed and wired. So the part shouldn't be hard to obtain or anything. We're not likely to run into no. a shortage issue. Correct. Okay. 
so Bonnie, I would say we're looking at worst case scenario, having a ramp for, it sounds like a couple of weeks before we have doors that, that go with it. But let me point out one thing, complete worst, complete worst case scenario we have until November 10. Just right. Putting that no, yeah. I understand. I mean, but if, if, if Bonnie's concern is the one being finished and the other not being finished, then I'm looking for the time lag between the two. And it sounds like it's about two weeks, yep. um, which seems to me, given the cost savings that we might realize by, by putting the two together, to probably be worth pursuing that way. Um, Liz, I, Adam Wonder seems to have something to chime in here. Yeah, sure, please. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just want to chime in and say with the way the building material costs are constantly rising right now, if you uh -huh. go along the ramp, that could definitely change your overall cost. Got it. Um, and then as far as doors, doors are taking about a three week lead time just to give you a heads up. Um, we just recently ordered some at RVT to replace exterior doors and the steel entry doors are roughly three weeks to get. So, so we're looking at all of, so what exactly are you coming out of that with? Are you recommending that we should tag the doors onto this contract just to get them in place sooner because of the lead time on the ordering, Adam? No, not necessarily that. I'm just saying that you would definitely want to move forward with the ramp because concrete prices have not climbed that much yet. If you put it back, and then, well, we'll bid, it this then your chances are the concrete prices are going to be a lot higher. So your yeah. bid price is definitely going to climb. Got it. Um, Adam Winder, you are still really fuzzy. Oh, I got to get a new microphone. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you might, at least, given that you're the bulk of our agenda, you might want to sit closer to your computer when it's your turn. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. I thought it was my hearing that was going. <laughs> I just wanted to point out one, one more thing. I just wanted to point out, you know, this, this bid amount of approximately $165,000 pales in comparison to what it came in two years. And now granted it's changed a little bit, but from two years ago, the, the bids for this ramp were in the $450,000 range. So, and that's mostly due to the foundation work that Gana had on their original plans that is not required now with, with, the, with the piles. Got it. I, I have two other questions, Liz. Um, sure. one, one of the other things that we discussed is that the water authority is taking up the cost of what, John? Uh, providing the vertical clean out, the materials for the vertical clean out that will, uh, like for instance, I just had my, my sewer ladder replaced at my house. The, I went over to the water authority, picked up the pipe, the casing pipe, the cap and everything. And that's provided by the water authority. The physical labor still goes, is, is to be done by the contractor or in this case, subcontractor. Okay. So that's, that's going to be taken care of. Um, uh, I, I, I lost the try train of thought, Liz, so I can't remember what the second question was. Welcome to my world, Bonnie. Um, <laughs> um, well, I think, um, I mean, clearly, especially given Mr. Winder's input on the rising cost of materials, we want to get this bid executed as soon as possible. I think we could probably engage in a change order if we deemed it wise after we accepted the original bid, correct, Mr. Sander? If, if that's the way we want to go, I would be completely and completely in favor of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know that that's necessary, but I guess what I'm saying is if we do think there might be a delay in procuring the materials, that means that we won't be able to have the doors in place for a couple of months after we get the ramp in place or something, it might be wise for us to look at uh, some alternative whereby we, we begin the process of getting the doors in earlier rather than later. I agree. Um, but because uh, I, I would agree with Bonnie that there is a little bit of an optic issue, you know, with uh, with having a fully functional handicapped accessible ramp to the front door and no way to get in the front door um, for a length of time, even if even if we don't really even if our, our deadline on all of this is is November. Um, but uh, but as long as the as the delay isn't too great, I don't I don't feel that it's a huge problem, especially if we make sure that we put up signage saying the doors are are, are coming. Right. <laughs> Um, and I would put that signage at the bottom of the ramp, not at the top of the ramp. Uh, if there's if there's a delay between the one and the other. Um, but uh, that said, I, the Mr. Winder, I apologize. You pro or not, Mr. Winder, Mr. Yoder. 
you probably have some questions on this item too, and I'm just chomping all over your turn here. No, um, I actually don't. You guys covered a lot of them anyway. I mean, I, I, I appreciate Bonnie's concern about the, the door. Um, given that we seem to have a very short timeline between the ramp being done and then being able to have the door done, I'm comfortable moving forward um, a, as it is. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad exercise to maybe look at a change order now um, in the event that it's um, that it's very comparable to what comes in over the next two weeks and it, we can get that done sooner. I'm not opposed to that. I don't think that's a bad exercise, but I think um, given the fact that we've kind of highlighted that, I don't want to say gap, but like just um, differentiation between the two projects, knowing that um, it's, it, it's out in front of us. I think that's the important thing here. So uh, I think we have a plan of attack to make sure that it gets done as soon as possible. So I'm comfortable. Got it. Um, oh, Liz, would... that, was my, that was my second question. We talked about veneer. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, John. I told you that. I have no idea what you mean by the veneer. Sure. Uh, so, give me one, give me one step. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Liz. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, veneer, Bonnie, is like the same as if you have a piece of furniture in your house that has like a wood veneer on it um, with a cheaper material underneath and then nice wood, a very thin um, layer of nice wood on top. Um, and you okay. probably, I, I have lots of pieces of furniture in my house that are, that are, that are a wood veneer um, piece. Uh, this is the same thing, but it, you've got concrete underneath and then you've got a thin veneer of stone on top to make the um, ramp sort of melt in with the rest of City Hall, which is of course a stone building. Now, I would have um, liked to have seen that from the low bidder. However, it didn't happen. I've since spoken to the low bidder at the time when the bids were due, they didn't have a mason. However, they do now. So that is a potential option as well. Could we see if we can get a quote on that? Because that was actually my primary concern. Yeah, John, I, I don't, right now is not the good time to do it. But after that. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it as an impediment to moving ahead with the contract. But I would, if, they, if they can provide us with an after the fact cost, yeah. with an after the fact cost yeah. as a change order cost, I would like to see that. Because I, I, I agree with you that I think the railing that is more, um, more in keeping with AD, with ADA requirements is uh, is a better idea. But I also think that the city has a certain obligation to meet. Uh, you'll pardon me for the background noise. I don't know what's going on out here. Um, the city has a certain. Let me move inside. Uh, obligation to to meet the same historic standards that we that we ask so many other people in the city to meet. And, and if that, um, and consequently, I think we should be looking at um, doing the veneer, but not the railing if possible. Yep. So and just to give an estimate on that cost, like a couple of the other contract, couple of the other contractors did provide a cost for that. And they're in the range of the 29,000 to 49,000 just for the veneer itself. So just yeah. to let you know, it's a little bit costly, but yeah, I, I agree. I actually would like, personally, as a per yeah. just, uh, myself, it would be nice to for to mend with the stone, the facade of the building itself. Yeah, I mean, and there and there's another thing that I think we should be looking at for that, but not that would be part of the quote. But I'm assuming that the city, after the ramp is installed, will be looking at putting in some um, landscaping around the ramp. Correct. Agree. And all in addition to that, I spoke to our city electrician, who is very uh, able to. The, uh, provide additional lighting above the ramp as well. So are we doing lighting above the ramp or are we doing lighting like like along the railing or something? That was that was the other question I had. Uh, Adam, you remember Adam Winder and I had to come with your electrician. Adam, remember what I think he was looking at either above or or to the side of. Uh, uh, he was going to look at what would cast the most light in the walkway as well as making it lit up no enough to be safe. Um, so he was going to do a lighting analysis to make sure that once the ramp was built, we had sufficient lighting. Okay, so, sounds good. So we're so we're looking at um, sufficient lighting, ideally attractive lighting pointed downward. I'm kind of meeting all the all the ex, all the expected specifications for lighting right now. Correct. Correct. Um, and making it to say that it's not evil. there's no no light pollution involved it's it, you know it's either attractive or it's hidden 
so that yeah. we don't right need to worry about uh, marring the uh, the look of City Hall in that way. No, um, definitely not. We, we want to make it aesthetically pleasing as well. Okay, good. Um, all right, then. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know how the rest of the finance committee feels, but I I would feel that the stone veneer. Um, I think it would be one thing if we were putting in a ramp that we were that was a temporary installation for some reason, you know, and I would not even remotely feel like we were obliged to make it in keeping with the rest of City Hall. But given that we're expecting this to be here for the next, you know, 50, 60 years, I, I think that the the out the additional outlay, um, which is relatively minor in terms of the, of the total project for Stone Veneer is going to be well worth it, um, especially when we're asking so many other people in the city to try to to keep their properties attractive and in keeping with you know um with the rest of the community i, I think that's something that, that's a standard that we should hold ourselves to as well and i just wanted to add one thing these aren't things i missed i just i wanted to keep the project the ramp simple that way it just it got up and then we could deal with the these the minor detail the details after ourselves with, with regards to landscape and lighting these weren't things that were missed these are just decisions that you know, to try to keep the project simple. No, 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 I wasn't saying that. I mean, and the other thing is, John, that in terms of the landscaping, you know, once we get into high summer, we're going to be better off to plant landscaping stuff in the fall anyway. Um, yeah. We'll have a much higher chance of survival. Um, but I wasn't saying that you missed it. I'm just, we're just trying to cover all our bases and make sure that we are planning for these items so that once again, we don't have a ramp in place and no lighting on it. You know what I mean? I yeah, no, I just wanted yeah, to say John, that for public information. All, I mean, like, yeah, that John, you didn't miss it at all. I mean, like it's clear that this is a um, alternate that that we were looking for. Timing didn't work out for the low better, so I, you're good. Um, can you remind me, John, what was the initial budget that we thought we were looking at for the ramp? For the, I, years ago? I, I, I remember what that was. Down. Joe, Joe Pollock, are you on the? We had a the email discussion a couple months ago about that. It was short and sweet. Uh, Joe, are you on the call by chance? Uh, I, no, I yeah. thought. I thought Adam was asking what the at pre the, the bid estimate was for this project itself. Yes, this, this specific oh. piece of the project. Yes, my, my own my own internal estimate. Is that it was what you're 160 asking? one sixty to one eighty, right, John? That's one sixty to one eighty. I, yeah. I think that that's what John said earlier. It should be. Isn't there? Wouldn't it be listed on the um the bid summary? The, I, the, the, the only thing I'm just to, uh, the only thing I was just trying to get at was. I mean, this 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 project came in under what we thought this was going to cost us two years ago. Um, my hunch is that if we can um, negotiate a change order um, in line with where what the range of what that stone veneer was and keep it still under that budget, I think that would be a win win for everybody. We can get it, which I think is a good idea and still be under budget. That, that's that's all I'm simply getting at. So. Um, <laughs> okay. good, yeah. Good. yeah, I think that's I a good point. Said that. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think, I mean, and right. We were initially looking, I think with the elevator and security improvements a, a couple of years ago at like a, a almost a million dollar total project. And so clearly bringing this in so substantially under the cost yeah. that it was quoted a couple of years ago. Um, ideally, if we can bring the other elements in under budget as well, I mean, we're, we're, this is just in, much, much more affordable and I think gives us the, the leeway to try and do, you know, to, to try and make it both an attractive and a serviceable addition to City Hall. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the rest of the project. And John Sander, um, you're moving lightning quick on this and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Ms. No Mealy, yeah, to, answer, to answer Mr. Yoder's question. Yes, <laughs> the ramp came in last time as an ad alternate at 430, 430,000. Yeah, so we can, I mean, and the base, can... the base bid, sorry, was 89,920. And that was, that was general contracting for the elevator and front doors. Got it. <clears throat> um, okay. We're looking at, so Ideally, what we should expect him to be spending, what we should expect to be spending on the elevator and front doors this time around, should hopefully not exceed something around a hundred. Then, um, is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, costs are going up, I know, but 
do we have a ballpark uh, that we're hoping to, that we're hoping to? Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but the elevator itself was one bid. The yeah, there were three the there elevator. were three bids. So the um and again this is just going off the last bids. The the general portion of the elevator and front doors came in at ninety thousand, just shy of ninety. The elevator itself came in at one sixty nine five hundred. And the electrical came in at fifty three three fifty. Three hundred thousand dollars, roughly total. Yeah, that sounds that sounds closer to my recollection. I was like ninety thousand, really? <laughs> Thought I remembered it being more than that. Okay, all right. No, that's just that's just the general contractor portion. Yeah, that's the GC. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, um, yeah. So that. I guess we'll look forward to seeing what these other amounts come in at as well. Um, but do we have any other questions on this element? Uh, in terms of, hang on here, coming back out into loud territory again. The, in terms of the rebel resolution itself, um, do we want to structure that? Let me pull it up. Um, In the sense that we might be adding veneer, do we want to structure the resolution slightly differently? Does the administration want to look at that for another second and maybe have a proposal to us on Thursday? We can, but do we have a legal counsel on by chance? No, no, we don't. Okay, so I don't want to answer that without running that by uh, city solicitor. Uh, I, I worded it specifically for the base bid was blank for a reason, meaning in the event we needed to add something, which almost 99.9% .9 of the time happens during construction, we could. Right. I, I'm fine with that. Um, I guess I'm just wondering, at some point we would maybe want this to come back for a bid if, or for council review, if the cost was going up for other reasons as well. Um, so usually it would say in an amount like that there's something in, in, in an amount not to exceed 164516. Um, like, I've just, like I've just been informed, you have to accept the base bid, and then after it's accepted, you can we can do a change order. So you, right. yeah, that's yeah. any any change order <clears throat> over 10% is required to go back before council. Got it. Um, so we're pretty much gonna, yeah, we're gonna trigger that for almost anything anyway. Um, then, I mean, generally speaking, the wording would be in an amount not to exceed 164, 516. Um, I don't know what's, what's convention. You want to run that? Will you run that past the solicitor, please, John? I can change that to not to exceed. Uh, I, there are other, for instance, there are items that I put on the drawings, um, the, the decorative medallions in, in the street. You know, I, I have the contractor to protect them to the maximum extent possible. However, in the event that they are, required to be moved they will be the contractor will be paid for paid for this work because uh, yeah, contractors want, want paid for the work they do right so, right right um but that could that would be a small you know small amount not not to the tune of forty thousand dollars obviously yeah yeah are there do we have any other exposure in the you know, it, okay. it doesn't really matter um just try just trying to think of what how we might expose ourselves to additional costs there um, anyway, I, you know, I, uh, do other members of the finance committee have any input? President Allison? Um, if, if you're talking about the wording of the resolution, um, I mean, if we really felt we needed to change it to a not to exceed of whatever the number is, I mean, I, I don't think that's an issue, but I mean, my assumption here, and from what I see, this is a firm fixed price um, solicitation. So I don't know that the wording is going to matter. The contract is going to be a firm fixed price. So I think we're, I don't think we're exposed in any other way. So I think, I think we're okay regardless. Got if, it. if, 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 yeah. if other members of the finance committee and council were com are more comfortable changing it, I think we can, but I think it's a moot point. Yeah. I'm comfortable. Uh, I'm quite comfortable with the, the base low bid. 
Um, I think with anything that we're going to be doing with this, I think we're going to have add-ons to be, you know, with this, you know, when it's all said and done. Um, so uh, to me, I think we go with the, the, the low bid, the base low bid. And uh, I don't think there's a problem to, uh, with what we know is going to come down the pike here with doing the veneers, which I agree with you, Liz, aesthetically, this is what we looked at before. And I know Adam Winder was looking at stone before anyhow for, for this. Um, so, you know, it, to me, I, we want it to look really good when this, this is done. And um, so therefore, you know, if we're going to add on, even if we go to the high bid of 50,000 for the veneer, um, that's still going to have to come back to us anyhow. So I don't see a problem with the resolution as it stands now. Let's get the let's get the ramp going, and then um, it's like like I said to Adam Yoder, you know, you're doing your wedding here. You're getting all your 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 ducks in line, your venue, your 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 caterer, and things like that. Uh, it's all the other aesthetics that come at the end that really start. You see what you need, and that's what we're going to need with the the. Uh, doing the landscaping, the lights, and doing a veneer, and making sure that everything is in place afterwards. But I think we really just have to look at getting this ramp up and going, yeah. as it is. All right, well, on that note, um, anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion we forward to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Sander. Thank you so much. All right. Um, then item number two on this, uh, on our agenda today is a resolution authorizing the sale of a 1997 parent leaf machine. Mr. Winder. Good afternoon. Um, this is the same resolution as last time, just a different township and a slightly cheaper price. Um, it is a resolution to authorize the sale of a 1997 parent leaf machine from the city of Lansport to Castanea Township in the amount of $1,500. Um, as I said last time, typically we'd put this stuff on municipal bid. Um, we definitely would not get this amount for it. The reason this one is cheaper than the last one is this one is a lot smaller machine than the last one. Therefore, we felt the need to reduce the price a little bit. And I will answer any questions you may have. Uh, the members of the Finance Committee. I have no questions. Me neither. Uh, me neither, Mr. Winder. We're glad to see that we're getting more for it than we would get on municipal. That's excellent. Um, and it is such a, once again, such a lovely piece of equipment. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, it, it's exciting to see ourselves getting rid of old inventory and, and actually getting some decent money for it. Uh, if there are no other comments, I will take a motion um, from another member of the Finance Committee. I make a motion we pass this on to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Okay. I know number three is a resolution to adopt WBT DBA River Valley Transit operating budget for 2021 2022. So that would be the Williamsport Bureau of Transportation doing business as River Valley Transit operating budget. Mr. Winder. Um, so I know this is unusual. It's never been done in the past. Um, typically, River Valley for Williamsport Bureau of Transportation's budget would be rolled into the city budget um, under the new recommendations from PennDOT and the FTA um, and the separation of um, financials and other things. Um, moving forward, the best way to do this is to bring a resolution to council prior to submitting the budget to the state for their approval. So that is the reason why we're doing this today. Um, as you said, this is the budget for Williamsport Bureau of Transportation for fiscal year 2020-2022. Um, this is the operating budget. It is in a total amount of $8,827,832. Um, it covers various items. Um, Operator salaries and wages, salaries and wages of others, which is your admin staff, et cetera. Fringe benefits, um, services, which include, currently RVT pays $75,000 a year to 
the city land sport for payroll and check processing. Um, we budgeted that same amount. The only thing that um, moving forward, we would request to have done is to be accurate to the city of Lansport. If the individuals that process the payroll and check checks for RVT could document their time so that we are sure we're paying the city of Lansport the correct amount of money out of um, Lansport Bureau of Transportation's funds. Um, it covers auditing services, uh, building repairs, pension, um, service contracts, which include software, maintenance, cleaning services, legal services, um, sold for our, uh, you know, our security system at Trade and Transit 1, Trade and Transit 2, um, training and safety costs for conferences, etc. cetera, um, <clears throat> protective services, port elevator, for the elevator inspections at the transit centers, as well as the um, Church Street parking deck, um, window cleaning, Humphrey Pest Control, utilities uh, that apply to the transit portion of the buildings, advertising expense, um, fuel and lubricants, tires and tubes, um, other materials and supplies includes office supplies, parts and chemicals, stuff made of paper for our cleaning supplies, copy paper, um, bus repairs, parts, um, covers utilities, telephone heat, PPNL, um, casualty and liability costs, fleet insurance, uh, miscellaneous expenses, uh, paratransit, we partner with STEP um, to take care of our accessible ADA trips. Um, planning expenses include a portion of salaries based on planning meetings as well as travel expenses. Uh, the Peter Herdick Transportation Museum. Oh, I'm sorry, that's no longer in this budget. I apologize. Um, includes our revenue from fare boxes. Uh, it will show our organization paid fares, um, anticipated revenue, fixed route service to Lock Haven, and potential organizations that RVT is approaching, uh, non fixed route, other federal eligible advertising revenue and charters. Currently, charters have leased with Susquehanna Trailways, um, CNG fuel rebate. Um, I think that covers it all. Um, it does include our federal assistance as well as Act 44 and our local share. I will answer any questions you may have, and I also have Nicole Farr here to assist in answering questions. All right, thanks, Adam. Bonnie, Adam uh, Yoder. Uh, yeah, I got a handful. Um, a lot of it is, I think, follow up from last year's budget. There were a number of items of discussion um, and points that we had started to touch on that I think it's a good time to follow up on. Um, a couple of clarification items, though. Um, I, I know this is a resolution. Do we, um, I'm, I'm assuming the state asked for a resolution specifically. Um, do we legally, though, need to do this as an ordinance? I know the third class optional charter that um, defines um, accepting and approving budgets as an ordinance. Um, have you had any conversations with the solicitor just to make sure as the city proper, we're not, um, you know. Yep. So Jill is the first one I spoke to about it, um, Jill Maggie, and she is the one that recommended the resolution. Then yesterday I was in email exchange with Norm and he agreed with the resolution. Okay. Yeah, I didn't catch. I didn't catch that from Norm. It just said. It just said that he had simply said that we might ask. So okay. Um, I, uh, I I was a little disappointed as well to see. Um, you know that there wasn't a lot more detail as we had discussed. Um, in in last year's budget time. Um, mm -hmm. to the point where I, I I'm not sure how comfortable I am 
um, today um, approving or, or pushing forward the budget. Nonetheless, I mean, it, it's here and we'll certainly discuss it. Um, as far as a handful of things that we were um, starting to hit on and discussing, I wanted to follow up on a lot of them. Um, in last year's budget, we were talking um, about, you know, we were using a lot of support from PennDOT, which I think is great, um, given the transition that we've had over there. Um, we had, I think, um, asked for, and um, at least I was um, looking for just a synopsis on, you know, what, what kind of things were we getting coached on? Um, what are some of the things that we needed to get corrected? Um, why and any kind of budgetary impacts? How's that going? Have you been able to generate any kind of um, document for us to just start to, I think, as, as, a, as the board of RVT, um, educate ourselves on? Um, actually, we are in the middle of an Act 44 review today. Okay. Which covers everything you're looking for. Okay. That Good. is where, you know, in the past, this is what we were lacking. This is where we're currently at. And this is where we need to be moving forward. Um, it lays out a five-year plan um, for us to basically know what the roadmap is to get to where we need to be. Okay. Um, it sets milestones. It helps with completely understanding what reporting um, we need to improve on, where we are with what we're currently doing. Maybe this is where we're excelling and this is where we're lacking. Um, it's actually, like, as I said, taking place right now in the conference room. Um, we're on the planning piece of it at the moment. Um, it's going to be a valuable tool and it, they actually put together a report that we're going to bring to council okay. um, and provide to everybody. And then it goes public as well. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces with it. And this is the piece that we have been really waiting for. Okay. Um, it just took a while to get everybody to the point that, you know, everybody could be together to do it. Cause there's about six individuals on this. Yeah, there's about six individuals on this meeting right now, not counting RVT staff. And that as well as the White House group. Yeah, we have White House group consultants as well as PennDOT. Wade White is the only person that's on site here. Everybody else is via Zoom. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, so that's going to answer a lot of questions for everybody. Okay. When do we expect to have that wrapped up and then have that presented to council? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be another 90 days. Oh, yeah. um, it's at least at least nine days. We have a draft though. And we'll have a draft because what they'll do is they'll send over the plan. They can't hear me. You guys want to check. My right. microphone sucks. They'll send over. They'll send over what they come up with as the plan. We have to respond to some of it. We have to give them what our vision is on some things. They'll come back with a report. We have to review it. We have to give them uh, comments on it. Then they have ninety days from that point to make it final. At which point. We'll get the final draft and that's when it'll get presented to council. My recommendation would be to have weight at that meeting. Yeah. Okay. So I mean it sounds like months. Um, but we're okay. certainly open to sharing the what we're going to receive first that we're going to respond back to. Okay. And we'll share our responses with you so that you know everything every step of the way. Okay. Um so uh, probably the next like few weeks we might have some of that preliminary stuff and then some responses. Yep. Okay. Um, because once we, once they send it to us, we only have two weeks to respond. Okay. Um, so it's going to be very fast moving, but as we receive it, we'll share it with members of council. Then once we do our responses, we'll share that with members of council. Um, the mayor and President Allison were here today for the governance portion of it. Okay. Um, it's, it's really going to be helpful in a lot of ways, um, not just for us, but for all of you as well. Okay. No, I, I, that's a, that's a, that's a solid answer. I, uh, I appreciate that. I look forward to seeing that. Um, can you send the time study stuff along with that? I think that'll help yep. um, kind of delineate who's been spending what time and what have you. I know we talked about this, I think last summer um, we had a follow-up ask for the time study at the budget time. Um, so um, I don't remember getting it. So I think that both time studies on general government side, as well as RVT side, because um, I believe we were tracking time across the board. I think that would be very helpful in, I think, digesting what's brought forward. So um, 
We that can would actually be fantastic. send the time studies out this week. Now, I guess the only other part I want to touch on since we're going to talk about the time studies is when you look at the time studies, all those salaries are not pulled from this budget. Um, like there's an individual that does parking authority. Mm -hmm. His salary is paid through the money we receive back from the parking authority. That's, that's right. That's not including in this budget. That is totally separate. Um, we're actually, because it just like, I would say, because PennDOT's requirement is that we separate all of these accounts even further than what we were before from fixed route to non-fixed route to transit versus non-transit. Um, we've had to expand the way we break things out. So now when, we'll just say when the individual at the parking authority, when we do his payroll, we actually have to transfer money from the non-transit account that the money from the parking authority of the reimbursement goes into over to the expenditure account to pay that salary. Yeah. I, I hope it's all making sense and I'm saying it correctly. Well, yeah, it, I mean, does it, does it make sense? Why? Yeah. Do I understand why we have to do that? I, I, I don't yet. And I think, you know, what we just discussed with the study or what have you will, I think, articulate some of that. So yes and no. Okay. Um, that's why, you know, last year when I had asked about having a more detailed, you know, document between budget and, and supporting information, I, those are the kinds of things that I think a, a more thoroughly prepared um, budget that we got like in 2019 um, is, is helpful because I think, you know, the more information that we as I think the board of RBT have, um, the, the easier it is to understand those intricacies. I mean, it's a very unique organization compared to um, the streets and parks department from a requirements perspective. And I think the more information, um, the, the more better informed we are to be able to support um, RVT. But in, in addition, you know, just making sure that things are going correctly um, and, and, and passing items through, there, it brings a whole other level of comfort, at least for me. So that, that's, yeah, so I, I, I get all that. Um, a couple of, I think, maybe more high arching strategy things that um, that I wanted to, to, to ask about. Um, a couple of things that were discussed in November. Um, the we talked about the funding, the the, the CARES Act funding, mm -hmm. um, and I and I see that it looks like um, from the federal operating perspective, we are still pulling from that. What's where are we at from that drawdown? I know there was what seven point two million available initially. Um, we've pulled some down already. Where are we at? And, and what's the status of, I think, those additional operating grants that we typically pull from? Are, are they still there? How long are they going to be there? With this budget, with the $2.6 million that's in it for FPA, we will have $1.9 approximately left on our CARES funding, okay. we have 2.5 for our FY20 apportionment, we have 2.5 for our FY21 apportionment, and then we have the American Relief CARES that just came out, we have 2.5 there. We have not even applied for those yet. Okay. Um, they go out, the, the FY20, we have to apply and start drawing down and have it done by FY24. So when we hit FY23's budget will actually be using either the ART funding, the federal that just came through, or we'll be using our FY20. So at this point, in terms of federal funding, we're actually ahead of the game. In terms of state funding, they kept it the same as last year. So we did not get an increase in that. In terms of our local funding, that did go up 5% that we have to put back to the townships um, and cities because it goes until you hit 15% of your budget the state puts you up 5% every year. But it was by the recommendation of the state and FDA to use our CARES Act funding first yeah. before we actually use our normal allowance. Yes. Yeah, and if I remember, um, if we get into the situation where let's say we need 3 million and we've got 1.9 of CARES left, we're able to pull from, from different pots at the same time to get to what we need from an operating assistance, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
we could we could apply for FY20 funding if we had to. Okay. Okay. Is there a time frame that those stay available? Like, I mean, if we don't touch them for, let's say, three years, do they go away, or how how does that work for prior? Um, for instance, our FY20 funding, we have to have it applied for and drawn down on it and closed by FY24. If we apply for it now and we don't start drawing down on it for, say, two years, they can come back and say, no, you're not getting the funding. So you don't yeah. have to apply for it until you're ready to use it. So there's so there's realistically a four-year window. Once you, once you hit a, an operating year, there's a four-year window where you can apply and then draw down. And then the sweet spot is... Once you apply, you want to draw it all down so you don't lose it. Correct. Within two years, you want to draw Within it. Within two years. Down. Yep. Okay. Now, with the 7.2, for example, we put that all in operating at the time because we weren't sure what the state was going to receive for funding to be able to fund us. Um, now, if we got a situation where we needed it for capital, we could naturally make a request to transfer some money from operating back to capital if we were in a pinch. We could do an amendment. Right, we would actually be able to do an amendment. Um, but like I said, at the time, operating seemed like the most sensible place to put it, not knowing what the outcome was gonna be. Of the yeah. yeah, no, 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 I get you. The more, the more concerning thing to me was, it was just, was just understanding how the how the funding mechanism works as far as just timing and how long it'll be available and what have you. I mean, it's a it's a it's a big part of what we do, so um, we we don't want to lose it. Uh, do we have any clear picture of what that looks like, when it might happen? Oh, I mean, so it's just something I think is important to kind of revisit and hit on if if we've made any progress from there. Yeah, can I I can chime in on that a little bit? Um, sure. Randy and I um, we actually that was part of our discussion this morning. Uh, with the folks. Um, and so there's no, there's no real timeline right now. It is part okay. of the process that we're going through. Um, and we have to uh, work on getting things straightened out uh, first. And then from there, look at, uh, you know, the next few years uh, and what that will look like. So PennDOT is aware, obviously. Um, and as, you know, RVT has expanded, um, clearly that's a, a discussion point and, you know, we'll, we'll most likely be, uh, you know, a recommendation moving forward. So uh, we're not to that point yet, but it's definitely uh, in the discussion phase. And as we get our recommendations here through this Act 44 plan and others, uh, you know, we'll be able to have a more definitive timeline, hopefully not in the not too distant future. Okay. And Randy, you can chime in or others. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we were um, interviewed in, in the governance section and um, of Adam Yoder of bringing to to RVT um, because uh, you know the, the the plain fact of the matter is um, there's there are a lot of things to clean up. Um, there's got to be some <clears throat> restructuring first before we can put even put some of those things in place or at least a, a clearing up of of what's there and i i get the sense that there's there's still some work some work to do there um in any case um yeah and in the conversation that we had with them they said yes council and the administration are going to have to we're going to have to find out yeah what we think is the best uh method uh, you know, whether it's an authority or a governing board that oversees that, um, we're going to have a lot to do uh, as uh, this unfolds. And, and until it unfolds, um, the good questions that, that you've been at asking, uh, Adam, until it unfolds, some of those are, are not going to be able to be answered. Yeah. Uh, if the, the answers to those are going to come out of uh, some of the things, some of the findings that are going to come forth from, <clears throat> from the investigations and the audits and everything. Um, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. sorry, Ryan, go ahead. No, that's just the sense I get out of uh, what yeah. we heard from them and, yeah, and they did say that uh, 
you know, moving forward, they'll, they'll obviously provide uh, recommendations, assistance, et cetera, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be our, you know, collectively, uh, council administrations, our decisions moving forward on what direction okay. we want to take. So, um, gotcha. you know, once we have everything kind of the foundation laid, so to speak, then they're going to say, okay, here's some recommendations, but ultimately, you know, we'll have to look at all of the data and information to make a decision. <clears throat> gotcha. No, I, I, I appreciate that. That, um, I think, uh, I think that that review five-year plan, it seems like the natural next piece of, I think, just the evolution of, 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 of what we're um, talking about with, you know, the budget and, and just the, the future of, of what, um, what we started talking about in November. So um, I will, uh, I will look forward to having that discussion and seeing, seeing the fruits of, of today's efforts. So um, that's, I've been I've been hogging the floor for here for about 15 minutes or so. So I'll let uh, Liz or Bonnie chime in with any more questions or comments here. So um, thanks, Adam. No, I, I think that's a good direction to take it in. And I think that all of us are a little frustrated with the extent to which so many of our questions can't really effectively be answered right now. Um, uh, Bonnie, was there anything that you wanted to add to the points Adam was making? No, Adam brought up all the points that I think we've been, been questioning and uh, it's a wait and see game now. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the case. And, and it is it, it is unfortunate, but I, I, it's good to know that we are making progress on these issues and, um, and getting to a point where we can kind of have a, a frank discussion and a more comprehensive understanding of, of the relationship, I think, between the city and its transit arm. Um, and what that needs to look like moving forward. But, uh, but the, the, the timeline for straightening it out is certainly um, intense and, you know, and has, I think, been frustrating to all of us. Um, so uh, if I could add one thing to that. Sure, uh, please, Andy. Just that um, the PennDOT is, and other agencies are, it's, it's not going to be an option. In other words, we're going, they're going to, require that we come up with solution and a plan internally. So, right. um, you know, we, it's definitely going to be something we do because we have to do it and not to, and we want to do it, but um, they're requiring it of, of us. So um, it's just a matter of timing now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so, but it is a long time, but yeah, thanks, thanks Randy. I think that's, that's aptly observed. Um, we sort of, uh, you know, as I think we get the feeling we have with so many things in city government, um, we, you know, we had a, a good 12 years there where we weren't perhaps following, you know, you know um, keeping up on protocol and, 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 and making changes as, as they might've been necessary by state and federal guidelines. And, and now we're playing catch up in a lot of areas. Um, and this is one of them. So um, we will uh, continue working on that. Um, and it's exciting to have an, an administration that's interested in, in, um, in trying to make certain that we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's in a way that, that the prior administration wasn't. So that's, that's good, guys. Um, Mr. Winder, if I can ask a, a quick question or two, um, the Transportation Museum is moving to another budget, I assume? Yes. Or is it, it be, between this item and the fact that we are, that we are donating um, something from the Transportation Museum to Jersey Shore later on on this agenda, I was wondering if the Transportation Museum was, if there was something more serious happening with it. Um, not at this time. Um, the, the other item is just, I don't know how else to put it, except for it's, um, I'm not sure Jersey Shore is going to be able to actually pick that item up and sit it on a trailer. Um, the, the estimate that we heard was $500,000 to restore that wooden trolley. And mm -hmm. I think it's something that the city of Lansport is in the business to fund, we'll say. Yeah. Uh, it was clear from PennDOT that RVT cannot fund it. Right. Um, the question becomes, you know, 
is Penn not going to allow RVT moving forward to hold the museum or not? I am not sure. Got it. All right. So, um, but for right now, we're removing it from our operating budget for obvious reasons in the yeah. same way that everything else is being removed. Um, no. That is not an indication that the, that the uh, Transportation Museum is about to suddenly cease to exist here <laughs> come the end of fiscal year 2020, 2021. Um, and I don't even, I, you know, I, I don't know that any of us have really been keeping up to date on what's going on over there, but uh, just, just trying to wrap my head around it in case I got questions. Um, explain to me a handful of the kind of um, unusual changes between one budget and the next. Um, I'm assuming that revenue was down related to COVID this year on the fare box revenue yes, side. Exactly. Okay. Um, and we're anticipating that to change then in the next fiscal year. Yes. Um, um, like we're taking yeah. a time back up. Okay. Uh, and perhaps you explained this and I missed it. And if I did, I apologize, but the applied revenue reimbursable salaries line in the non-subsidy revenue the, that was 1.2 million last year and is 36,000 this year? So for Endless Mountain Transportation, um, we help with their shared ride uh -huh. overflow. Um, and that's like the minivans, ADA trips, et cetera. Um, I don't know how else to say it. It's now unlimited mileage. Um, so the cost of us to do it was nowhere near what we were charging. Um, so we had to, you know, evaluate the cost versus the charge um, and came up with a solution of, you know, we had to put a cap on the amount of miles that we would charge for. Um, then for this year, or for 2021, 2022, that was taken out of the transit budget. Um, and that now falls into the non-fixed route revenue versus the fixed route revenue, which is what this budget is for. This budget is basically for just RVT fixed route because that's all the state and federal government um, funds River Valley Transit for. I hope that makes sense. Got it. So it sounds as though the difference in that number is twofold. Um, one item is is that we, we, we had kind of pumped that line up more than it should be, but also that element of it has been removed from the budget entirely. Um, That's correct. When will we see the non-fixed route budget? Will we see the non-fixed route budget? Yes, we are going to work on that and share that with council within the next couple of weeks. Um, and, and all of these budgets are running on a fiscal year? Yes. Um, plan. Um, will we likewise see a budget for the Peter Hurdick Transportation Museum and the Hiawatha at some point soon? Uh, yes, the Hiawatha, I don't know that you're going to get a budget for because I don't know where we're going to stand with the Hiawatha moving forward. Is that a fair yeah. thing in there? Yeah. Uh, we have, there's, there's been some discussions back and forth um, with the Hiawatha board and uh, they're not quite sure yet of the direction. So hopefully within the next few weeks here, um, they'll be able to, to have a, to provide us with the direction that they wanna, wanna go. So we have a, another meeting next week, I believe it is, um, to discuss the uh, Hiawatha moving forward with, their, with the board. I, I would say that at least to me, the Hiawatha is um, uh, perhaps more so than the Transportation Museum, uh, quite an asset to the city. Um, to provide a, a means for people to get to, to get close to the river um, in a way that's really quite difficult because of the levee system in many ways. Um, so I, I would hope that we can figure out a way to preserve that as a, as a service. Um, I know that it's certainly something that I recommend visitors do often. Um, but uh, I know, Liz, can I add to that? I know please. we get a lot of tourists that come into the area that, that go on the Hiawatha and look forward to it yearly. Um, I do have a question about the Hiawatha. Is anybody doing any maintenance on it since it wasn't uh, running last year at all? Is it, or is it just sitting there and nobody's paying attention? Yes. Um, so Mike Strunk and another employee from the Hiawatha itself 
Um, we're doing cleanup and other items to it. Um, the streets and parks department has done some of the maintenance to it this year as well. Um, so we're all in hopes that the board will come up with a positive solution to get the boat in the water. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, if you, if you would keep us posted on that, Adam, I don't know if there's any way that anyone on council can be of assistance with that, but I, I do think that's something that we should try to make a continued presence in the, in the city. Um, however, we managed to make that happen. Um, but an understanding of, of the past budget, I think would be very useful to that. And I don't believe we currently have that. Uh, so anything that, that, that you could send us related to that would be helpful. Um, anyway, uh, Bonnie, did you have any other questions on this? No, I don't. Uh, Adam Yoder, did anything kind of shake loose when I was asking questions? No, um, I would just again ask, you know, the, the more detail we get in these budgets, the more detail and information um, that we get in the moving forward in the future, um, the better. I, I, I mean, and I, I know we'll have a couple more coming to us in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope we'll see some more breakdowns just to help us digest what's being spent where, um, you know, when, when, you, when you get into that granularity, it really helps articulate, I think, the overall strategy uh, and, and how we're serving constituents. Um, and I think it's very prudent that we do that. I, I, and I, I, for one, actually appreciate that this is coming to, in front of us. This is things, this is something that should have been happening before and, um, you know, credit to you guys for, for doing it. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to see that. Um, just asking for more. Yeah. And, and I would actually ask Mr. Winder, Ms. Farr, um, I think in many ways, the more useful thing at least at the outset might be something that wouldn't take all that much, would take a little bit of time front loaded, but not much time then in years in years after that. Um, it would really just be helpful to have a narrative element along with the budget, um, explaining the sources of the various and sundry line items. And, and to a certain extent, um, I mean, Bonnie and I, because we were in receipt of RVT budgets prior to, um, you know, this past year, uh, have some sense of what some of these items, you know, and, and I think there's probably wording out there related to what most of these items pertain to. Um, but it would just, the, the narrative element would really be key, I think, both for the public and for council to, to understanding what the lines um, attribute to. And then, of course, from that point, anyone who wants a better breakdown of salaries versus, you know, um, fare box revenue, et cetera, et cetera, can, can ask for it. But I'm not sure so much that we need um, more broken down numbers as much as we need to understand where um, what specific state a little bit more about um, Act 44 section 1513 you know what what that where that comes from um, what the uh, what the particular restrictions are on the use of it what it's intended for etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, I think that would be really helpful you know we, we've done that a little bit in the city's budget um, over the last couple of years and I think the more information we can provide it in sort of a narrative format on budgets, the 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 more clear it is to um, to both other members of government and and to the public, yeah. um, and the more transparent we are with with where funding is is coming from and where it's going. Yeah, um, I mean to, to piggyback on that, I mean I, I'm simply referencing as a starting point, you know what what I receive uh, from the prior administration in 2019, leading into 2020's budget year, and I mean there's. Um, a, a pretty detailed breakdown of the RBT's 2020 budget, 2020, 2021, um, not 2019, 2020, sorry, but there's um, more detail about the state and federal operating grants. There's performance proficiency standards. Um, there's, there's a lot of like highlights on new routes, that kind of stuff, what's going on. I mean, some of, some of this may be fluffing over, over and above, but there are some good things in here. And if, if neither of you have a copy of that, I'm happy to bring it over so you can see what I'm referencing um for for future for future insight yeah if we could get a copy from you because there's yeah I'll, I'll bring it down this week for you that'd be greatly appreciated thank you do you, yeah. you happen to have that digitally council I, I do not i i only have um i'll double check but i'm pretty sure i only have it in paper and, okay. and I'll, right. I'll bring the paper copy over um That's right. i think that would be helpful okay Thanks. nicole can then scan it and distribute it out to whoever would like a copy of it yep yeah, I'd like to see that. Thanks. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, All right. If we are, 
Pardon me, Adam. We will send out a um, like an overview of what what each line item covers for all of you prior to the council meeting. Okay, that that'd be great. I mean, like uh, you know, it's it's a learning curve, like we said. It, it, but I think that in general we should work on a, a quality narrative to it to uh, accompany the budget. Um, if it doesn't happen this time, I don't know that I see it as the end of the world, but certainly the more quickly we can make it happen, the better I think that would be. Um, but uh, if I don't hear any other comments on this one, we've got several more items on the agenda yet. So I would take a motion. I'll make a motion to forward to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, the next item should be standard, right? Mr. Winder, um, a resolution certifying a local match for state operating financial assistance. Adam. Winder. Um, this resolution is to authorize the local match um, for the 2021-2022 budget. Um, it certifies the operating financial assistance of $4,642,549 provided pursuant to 74 PAC. CS 1513. Um, so in essence, this means that the local match that we're saying will be secured is $447,514. Um, and that is like Nicole said, um, due, it went up due to a 5% increase because we have not met our 15% match yet. Um, so there are increases issued by PennDOT. Um, this is paid for by individual municipalities um, that we will be billing once council authorizes this or approves this local match. And I'll answer any questions you may have. Bonnie, Adam? I have no questions. Adam Winder or Adam Yoder? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing here. I'm done for. All right. <laughs> um, Mr. Winder, as far as the match goes, have we seen any? I know that we see an annual increase in the amount of the match, correct? Correct. Until we meet the threshold. Um, where is that local match currently being drawn from? Like, are we, is RVT meeting the increase requirements? Is it, what, what's happening there? It's going to be distributed throughout all of the municipalities that pay into it. Okay. Um, um, prior to this, the city of Lansport paid it. Yeah. Okay. That's good plan. Uh, <laughs> well, and that's why we're veering away from that direction because it's not done the correct way and we need to correct it. Right. Uh, we will be issuing letters to all municipalities that pay into this as well as any other entity that pays into it just you know with a complete overview of exactly why it's going up um, being very transparent we'll share the um, letter from PennDOT with them so they see it's not us or the city um, necessarily increasing it that it is done at the state level got it and last question um I know we had had a partnership with the mall for quite a while. Has that? That has, um, that has dissipated, we'll say. Okay, I, I had a feeling, but I was just wanted to confirm that because we'd had a bunch of discussions about it over the years. Um, okay, um, that's everything I have. I would take a motion. I make a motion. We pass this on to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number five, a resolution authorizing the purchase of rolling service door to be installed at River Valley Transit Bus Garage. Adam. Um, this is for the installation of a new service door with controls. Um, this is one of the main garage doors that the buses flow in and out of on the third street side of the main garage here at River Valley Transit. It is. Um, it was budgeted in our CCA from 20. 20. Um, it is in the amount of $30,635 for North Central Garage Door. Um, the garage door that it is replacing is currently inoperable. Um, we did go out for three quotes 
Um, even though the recommendation from the solicitor was that since the garage door is not working at all and it, it does um, obstruct two lanes of bus parking and um, when they need one of the buses that are in one of those two lanes, they have to back up and try to navigate around the other buses that are in the building. Um, and it does become a safety issue. Uh, you see recommended getting three quotes and because it is over the threshold, bring it to council um, right away. So that is where we are. I answer the questions you may have. Great. Thanks, Adam. Uh, questions from anyone? Nope. Okay. Um, Bonnie, nothing from you? No, I'm sorry. I didn't answer. Okay. Oh, sorry. I was looking uh, at the other bid that they had from uh, another company. Got it. Just reading that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess my only question, Mr. Winder, would relate to. Uh, I know that we're funding it from a CCA grant, but I'm assuming since it's an emergency repair, it wasn't um, initially part of the CCA grant amount. Is that correct? Um, it was initially part of it as a larger project to replace all of the garage doors, which in the initial approval of the CCA grant, that part was declined until this garage door actually broke. And we went back to um, Mr. Levitsky and made a request to just replaced the one due to it becoming inoperable and it was amended the cca grant was amended at that point okay so this is not taking funding away from some other item that we'd receive funding for this is no. um well, this okay. is additional excellent. Funding. excellent okay um that's all i wanted to know uh if there are no further questions i would take a motion on this item i'd like to motion to forward the full body council with a positive recommendation second all in favor aye Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, item number six is a resolution authorizing the, the execution of a five-year service agreement between Structure Care and RVT. Hey, this, Mr. Winder, back to you. This resolution is to authorize a five-year agreement between Structure Care and River Valley Transit um, for preventative, yeah, preventative maintenance to the Church Street parking garage. Um, it also includes a full structure analysis, which um, with a parking deck is required every year. And I have to be completely honest and tell you that we have not had one done yet since the structure was built. Um, it is very complicated to find a one-stop company for something like this um, that is capable of doing the structural analysis as well as repairs, as well as educating our employees and staff on how to maintain the structure from the proper salt to put on the concrete to how to make minor repairs or preventative maintenance to the structure how to properly clean it and not um, make the concrete or the steel lose its integrity um, the other part is that currently the parking authority uses structure care for the third street garage parking garage um, so it made the most sense as well that, um, to go with structure care. So it's a one-stop shop, um, because in the future, near future, we are looking at River Valley Transit getting out of the parking business and trying to come up with a feasible lease for the parking authority to take over and maintain the church street debt. So that we're not involved in parking at all. And I will answer any questions you may have. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Winter. So just to be clear, this is I this is ideally facilitating a means for RVT to um, sort of exit the parking responsibilities that it has taken on over the years and turn those over as much as possible to the parking authority. Is that what you're saying? Yes, um, okay. that is the goal. Um, like I said, we, we're in the transportation business, not necessarily the parking business. Um, yeah. So it makes the most sense for the parking authority to manage the parking deck and maintain it and just pay 
you know, fair market value to River Valley Transit slash the city for the ability to, I guess, collect and revenue from the best way to put it. Got it. Um, okay. I, yeah, I think I, I would, uh, I mean, we're running a little short on time in this meeting, but I would personally be interested in having a much lengthier discussion about the relationship between RVT and the parking authority and the ways in which the administration is proposing to, to change that relationship. Um, Mr. Slaughter, is there any way that we could possibly uh, schedule that at one point coming up here shortly? Oh, yeah, we can schedule that, absolutely. Um, Cause I think that has always been a complex relationship and the, the way in which the parking authority operates within the city has always been somewhat complex. And I would um, really like to understand uh, what uh, kind of a, what, what our best management practices option might be. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, so thank you. Um, Bonnie, Adam. The only question I have is um, when you're looking at the structure care, the program cost summary, um, does that have anything to do with where this money is coming out of? Because it's not on the resolution. Um, the money would come from the non-transit account, which is money generated from the parking deck itself would cover this cost. Okay, so the $17,800 is coming from the parking authority. No, no, no. Parking authority currently pays us a percentage. You know what the percentage is of the third street or for the church street? Yeah. Church street is a point summary. Okay. The I'm sorry, church street, 100% of that money comes back to RVT. It comes back to RVT. Right. But it's non transit revenue. So that would be that $17,800 would come from that account. I think this goes back to what Liz is saying. We need to differentiate here parking authority and RVT. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, clearly, clearly, we need to take some greater action there um, than we have been. But, uh, Mr. Winder, the, so the revenue from the deck will both cover. I think the idea was that it would cover debt service on the deck. It, it, anyway, this isn't going to stretch the revenue at all, so that it won't cover other items that we need it to. No, no. It won't. Or will it actively save us money? <laughs> Which is what it sounds like. In the long run, it will save money. In the long run, it will save money. It will also save us from the possibility of a lawsuit. I'll be honest. I mean, if something happens at deck right now and somebody sues us, we're going to be in trouble because this has never happened before. It's never had a structural analysis. Got it. Okay. Bonnie, sorry to interrupt you there. Did you have? No, I think, I think uh, we do want more clarification of all of this in the near future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Adam? I'll just echo your sent your uh, sentiments. Thanks. Okay, then if I'm hearing nothing else on this item, I take a motion. I make a motion. We pass this on to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, hey, Bonnie and Adam, I introduced this idea to Joe a little earlier in the meeting, but um, did not loop you guys in. I am going to propose, um, especially uh, Mayor Slaughter, do we have a, a whole bunch of items slated for the agenda two weeks out for finance? Do you, I mean, not, not, not we have a I'm lot aware. coming down. Not that I'm aware of at this point, no. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to suggest that we hold off and review the financial documents that Mr. Pavlov was kind enough to provide us on time um, two weeks from now, uh, only because I know Bonnie needs to move over to Public Works and, um, and the meeting has already run fairly long. So if you two would be comfortable with that, I'll postpone review of those of the financial statements until two weeks from now. I'm okay I'm, with that. I'm okay. And the um, Public Works, the same people are sitting in front of us now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I know. But I just, I didn't want to, uh, um, I didn't want to keep you from public works and or make public works run until like, you know, or something and keep everybody here. So, um, so why don't we go ahead and we'll take, take the next, take the next two weeks, guys. To yeah, have yeah, a okay. Did you call Chris? Bonnie, Cooley? You're, all, you're not muted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you talk to Chris Cooley? Bonnie. There you go. You're good. Okay. I'm sorry. I have somebody. John Mark no was trying it's to get good. in. I'm it's sorry, guys. I didn't know I was not muted. No all good. <laughs> Chris, John Mark was trying to get in. <laughs> okay. okay. 
So anyway, let's all you take can't the next get in until this meeting's to... over. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. You can't so get let's... in until finance. Let's take the next two weeks to review the financial statements that Joe gave us um, in depth. Um, ask Joe any questions that would help us flesh it out a little further, and then for the benefit of both ourselves and the public, um, give those you know a good a good airing and a good vetting here in two weeks' time. Uh, okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'm not expecting to hear that from Bonnie too. But, uh, <laughs> in that in that case, I would um, go ahead and. and um, Ms. Frank, please uh, postpone those two items to next time's agenda. And uh, are there any related items that anyone else, that anyone would like to introduce? Liz, real quick, I just had a comment, and it's just a simple thought uh, surrounding the um, I think the, um, the the funding that's coming to us um, from the American Rescue Plan, uh, and it's just a simple observation. I, I've got a handful of ideas. I think of what it makes sense to use that money for. I'm sure the administration does as well, and I look forward to collaborating on all of those. Um, in the short term, I don't know the details of what we can, can't use that money for, what have you, but um, I do think it makes sense in the short term when we get it, it might be wise to look at um, putting that into some kind of account that may be able to accrue interest if we're able to. Um, and if that is something we're able to, it might be smart to start looking at um, who, how, and what, and what have you through. Maybe it's some kind of a RFP process or what have you. So. Um, I just wanted to throw that out to the administration um, and, and I'm happy to, you know, help in whatever way possible, um, more detail or what have you. I just, I, I think that it, um, if, if we're, um, if, if we're prepared to receive it, um, you know, we, we could make it go even further by, um, by, uh, by, by utilizing it the correct way by sitting there is all. Yeah. They didn't release those guidelines yet. Um, we're paying close attention, but yes, as soon as they do, we can, we can oh. circle back around and see, um, you know, John. what the best, best thing yeah. to do is in the short term. No, 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 no. That's it. Once, once again, Derek, I think that might be something that it would be nice to have a work session on with maybe council and the administration. Um, I, I guess I just think that it would be good for everyone. Once we have some sense of what the guidelines are mm -hmm. for everyone to kind of have a, a, a moment when we can sort of spitball what we think the, the highest priorities are for the funding. Um, I know that in the end, we're hoping to ask um, eConsult to help us figure out the, the most efficient, the best way to spend that money. Um, and I think that's great. But I, I also think that we should, before, before eConsult kind of gets involved, have a list of the things that, that all of us believe are, are high priorities for the city. Um, and then ideally what we have is a wish list, some funding, and we try to make those things gel in the way that's most beneficial. Um, yeah, no, so, yeah no, I agree. Yeah, and it, and we should the, the guidelines should be released relatively soon because the uh, tentatively you know discussions were that the first disbursement would be mid May. So probably any day now they'll start to release some of the guidelines. So anyway, yes, I agree. We can get together and, and have some brainstorming sessions. Yes, perfect. Great. Um, okay, uh, Adam, I think that's an excellent point to bring up, and I and I I do think that all of the minds should be at the table when it comes to that. So thank you. Um, okay. Uh, if there's nothing further, I would take a motion to adjourn. So move. Uh, second. I'm sorry. I guess a second. No, that's fine. That's fine, Bonnie. I, I I'm still to talking to John Markley. <laughs> I meant to second it, and then I forgot that I meant to second it. Um, anyway, I, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thanks so much for coming, everyone. Bonnie, sorry we, we ran over into your meeting time a bit. And uh, we will see you in two weeks' time. Okie dokie. Have a good one, thanks. all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.